Hey there, Vinyl community. Um, so today, I thought I'd talk about a film I watched last night, re-watched last night, a film I hadn't seen in a while. One of my favorite movies, um, a movie called Vanishing Point, made in 1971, and um, it's the story of a, a guy, kind of unlikely so, uh, scenario, this... Uh, driver Kowalski who uh, um, delivers stolen cars takes them across the country in this case he's taking it from uh, from Denver Colorado to uh, California and uh, hold on a minute and uh, he's kind of a he's a speed freak so he's uh, up day and night on uh, little white pills and uh, and basically, uh, during the course of the movie, we learn a little bit about his life. We learn that he, uh, he's a v Vietnam veteran and uh, saw some bad things happening, is uh, disenchanted with his country, with the lies, and uh, um, disenchanted with his life because of things that have happened and things that he's seen. And he dedicates his life to... Uh, to getting these cars across the country in, in record time. It doesn't seem like much of a movie. I saw first time I saw the film, I was a, a kid. Uh, I remember seeing it on television and uh, must have been probably in the late 70s or something like that. And uh, I remember me and a friend of mine who used to live right across the street from me, we, uh, we both watched it and uh, we loved it because it, it had this Dodge Charger in it amazing cars and had all those you know Detroit muscle cars from uh, from the 70s when when gas mileage didn't matter and pollution didn't matter and uh, and they were sure some stylish cars man cool cars and um, it, it, you know, as I grew older with the film it always kind of stuck with me and um, and there's you know, eventually you kind of, the reason a film like that sticks with you is because there's a lot more happening there than just um, Kowalski taking cars from, from Denver, Colorado to, uh, to uh, um, California. Stolen cars. You know, it's a story about uh, um, his life and his, his dedication to freedom and in many ways, I would say that it's a story about the death of the American dream or the death of American freedom as uh, it, w if it was ever real. Um, it was um, at least believed at the time or before that. And I think one of the things that Vietnam did is it opened uh, the eyes to a lot of people. Vietnam, Watergate um, opened a lot of the public's eyes that the that the country that they lived in wasn't everything that they were being told that it was. And uh, unfortunately, Americans have chosen to close their eyes, <laughs> even though they see what's going on, and allow for these things to continue anyway. So um, then uh, 2011 rolls around, and a band that I, I like, and I uh, always liked some of their singles. They were never as big in the States as, uh, as they were in, like, in the UK. Um, Primal Scream releases an album called Vanishing Point. And, uh, you know, I read some interviews with the band at the time, and um, uh, the, the, the film was made, and if you look at the song titles, you get it. Burning Wheels, Get Duck Kowalski, which is the lead character's name, and uh, Motorhead, Transpired. You know, you, you get the, it's a, in the way it was uh, kind of presented by the band was that this was like, the soundtrack that they wish went along to the film. And I like that idea a lot, because the soundtrack to um, the original Vanishing Point, it was very kind of, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, it, do, it, it really doesn't fit the film the way it should. They could have, they had an opportunity to make a really great soundtrack, you know, like maybe the way they did with like Easy Rider or something, even if they used bands from that era, they could have made a really hip soundtrack, and they did. They chose to go in another direction where they've got a lot of kind of hokey and, and silly songs. So uh, Primal Scream uh, wanted to correct that mistake, 
and created this album. Um, really great album. They're, they're, their best album, in my, in my estimation. I know that there are people who will disagree with that. I like Primal Scream. I like a lot of their singles and uh, a couple of their later albums. Um, um, but I didn't like the, the kind of the first part of the career as much. Kind of from this album forward is where I, I picked up on them. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it updates the soundtrack a little bit. And, and there's a lot of atmospheric... Um, sounds going on here a fair number of these tracks are just instrumental and uh would go real real well with um you know with with the movie i'd love to see somebody go in and and try to uh, uh dub it over of course it might not work because a big part of the film is there's this dj who is um warning him of the police see eventually what happens in the movie is that you know the police catch on to this guy and that he's you know, flying across the country, and they're they're going to get him no matter what. And he becomes this kind of existential symbol of of the free American roaming across the the plains and uh, trying to make it from one part of the country to the other part of the country. And they're the the authorities, um, this creeping authoritarianism within the country, is out to stop him um, no matter what. And the title of the film comes from this moment right at the end of it, which, you know, the whole film is great, and it builds kind of to this moment where they've got him trapped on the highway. And uh, he races the car one day, and he sees a roadblock. He can't get through there. And he spins the car around, tires screeching, you know, he whips the car around, hugs off the other way, and they've got him blocked in that way, too. And they've got him trapped. They think they've, they've got him now. They finally got him pinned down, he can't escape, they've, 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 they've stopped this, this guy still living for his, himself, you know, he doesn't have any papers, and he doesn't have any uh, W-2s, and he doesn't have, he's just living free and fast, and, and doing what he wants to do, delivering stolen cars across the country, and um, there's, a, there's a couple different interpretations of the ending, uh, from what I understand, um, the film, the way it was released in uh, in the um, in the UK, had a couple of additional scenes where the night before they finally trap him, he sees a girl on the side of the road, a beautiful young woman, and they uh, they smoke some pot together, they smoke some grass together, as they say in the film, they smoke some grass. And even though he had um, refused any other drug except the speed before, he smokes some some grass with this girl and spins off on the side of the road and the two of them have an evening together and uh, he wakes up in the morning and she's gone and the idea being that the girl represented and, and in the film one of the one of the few things she says to him is um i've been waiting a long time for you and you finally you finally arrived and uh it's the idea that the girl represents death and that he's he's done and, uh, but then there's a, another layer there too, this idea that, um, you know, if, if you see him look down the road, he sees the roadblock and they've got two, uh, two trucks, two giant trucks kind of blocking the way that he can't get through. And, uh, but there's a, there's an opening in the, in the trucks, a, a small opening that would never be able to, you know, he'd never be able to get through that opening. But the, the sun from the horizon is coming through that, those two trucks and peeking through. And the, and the sun rays are coming through and he smiles. At the end, he just smiles. And uh, they're, they're yelling, you know, give it up, Kowalski, you've got to, you know, it's over. And uh, instead he, of course, you know, he punches the gas and he uh, flies right through. And then the vanishing point is that point where the ending, the way the film is, ends, is really, uh, I think, I great. I, I love endings that don't explain everything. And um, I want to be able to put the pieces together myself. It's so much more meaningful. And I think it's the reason that this film stuck with me all this time. And just as he would have hit those blockades, the car, him, 
vanish. And that's it. And that's all we see. And that's the way the film ends, right there. And um, so it's this idea, the idea being that there is always an escape. That if you believe in freedom, and that if you believe there is a way out, you'll always be able to find it, and you will always, they, they, the world can never trap you as long as that glimmer of light is coming through that you can see, and you head to it, and kind of like, you know, the universe will <laughs> allow you to be free, or, or, or whatever, you know, you can interpret it in a, in a few different ways. Uh, great little film, gets overlooked a lot. I really, I really dig it. Vanishing Point, easy film to, you know, it wasn't, it didn't come out as this big art film. And I think that one of the things I like about it so much is that, you know, it was, I think it mainly appealed in the 1970s and at the time when, when we saw it. We were looking at it because it had, you know, this guy, this kind of defiant character who drove these fast cars and, um, and, and that was the appeal of it. But then lurking underneath all of that was this kind of um, subplot that um, was really interesting, and, and and it was great because you know um, Primal Screen became a part of that my fascination with the film, and this is a great soundtrack. If you're not familiar with it, if you like, if you don't like Primal Screen, this might be an album that you uh, consider listening to because it's got a lot of you know atmospheric sounds. You know Primal Screen was known for that, having those dance beats mixing those like dance beats with like a stonesy kind of rock sound. And um, I liked even later when they got even more electronic. And uh, to me, that's a more appealing aspect of the band, like this album and then forward. Um, but this is a great album. And uh, it's the only Primal Scream album I own. And I probably have to correct that one day. But um, it's, a, it's a cool listen and a fun film to watch. And uh, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And if you haven't heard this album, check it out. I think you'll like it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Thank you.